On August 25th, the Department of Defense released its highly anticipated Civilian Harm Mitigation and Response Action Plan. Todd Huntley is the director of the National Security Law Program at Georgetown University Law Center. He's a former Judge Advocate General for the Navy. Todd, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. So while you were on active duty, you deployed twice to Afghanistan with uh, Special Operations Forces. What was your role during airstrikes? Yes, so uh, my role was to be in the operations center while the strikes were um, being planned and conducted to give advice to both the planners and the uh, commander, uh, also referred to oftentimes as the target engagement authority, on the law and policy related to those strikes. So before we talk specifics, what was your biggest takeaway from DOD's plan? Uh, the biggest takeaway, uh, there really are two. One is the call uh, and requirement to implement measures across all operations, uh, all types of uh, conduct uh, that the military may conduct uh, in doctrine, policy, training, and strategy. So making this a part of how the military thinks, plans, and operates, I think is the most important one. And the second one is just the call and dedication to put resources against that requirement. So one thing the Pentagon's plan calls for is the establishment of a civilian protection center of excellence. What specifically would it do, and, and do you think it, it will work? Um, you know, the devil's going to be in the details. I think it, it it's a great idea. I think it's a, um, you know, it has a potential for making a, a real difference. Uh, obviously, it's going to depend on the resources that are um, given to it and uh, the role that it actually takes on. So I think a lot of the measures, including that one, we're going to have to see the details that are going to be put out in the forthcoming Department of Defense instruction. Uh, but I, overall, I think it's a it's a good idea. So what do you think some of the challenges are going to be in uh, implementing the changes outlined in the plan? Um, information, data, sharing all of that across all of the different entities in the Department of Defense. Uh, that are planning, uh, you know, putting together doctrine, training, and carrying out operations. That is really one of the challenges uh, that I think has been noted in many of the reviews and investigations before this plan's publication, uh, and then also um, the importance that's highlighted in the plan itself. You know, why? I wonder why you think it's taken this long to even have a plan, right? Civilians have been harmed in military operations since the, the founding of the country. Yes, um, I think um, one is when you're in the middle of an operation, when you're in the middle of a conflict, oftentimes I think it's difficult to take a step back uh, and think about how you might do things better. Um, I think the lack of sharing of information prevented a lot of these lessons from being shared. Um, and then I think it was the uh, the increased attention that was brought on this problem by non-governmental organizations and media outlets. And you've written about the importance of understanding objectives in the targeting process. Can you explain that? Yes. Yeah, so the very first step uh, in the targeting process is for the commander to outline his or her objectives for the operation. Uh, really, what that does is, you know, takes the um, the mission objectives that are set forth by our civilian leadership and then implements those across operations uh, putting on his or her own objectives on how that's going to actually be done. And so if the commander thinks it's important, uh, the commander is going to include that in the objectives for the mission. And that I think is really the key in making a difference in this area. You know, critics of this plan are saying that this is going to have um, a, a chilling effect. It's going to slow down operations. It's going to introduce too many layers of decisions and bureaucracy. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Um, you know, that uh, I probably as long as lawyers have been part of the military, they've been blamed for slowing down uh, operations and and acting as speed bumps for uh, operations. But I think the forward looking nature of this plan 
basically making sure that all of the measures are going to be in place, uh, systems are going to be in place, processes and personnel are going to be in place to think about this as operations are being planned. That will help alleviate some of that concern that um, you know operations are going to be slowed down by this. The other thing that's interesting about the plan is right up front in the very first page the secretary of defense states that the that the recommendations and implementations are scalable that is they can be implemented during counterterrorism and counterinsurgency operations like we've seen the last 20 years but they can also be implemented in large scale peer on peer conflicts and do you agree with that todd do you agree that this could be scaled to potentially a war with uh, you know a russia a china Yes, I, I do. Um, obviously, when you're talking about combat operations and, you know, built up urban areas, you know, largely con uh, populated areas, um, unfortunately, there are going to be civilian casualties. Um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be doing whatever we can to try to prevent those uh, up front. Um, so I, I think it can be scaled. But I also think we have to be realistic that, um, you know, we're not going to be perfect. All right, Todd. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you being on the program. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.